20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So throw off the bowl lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, quoted the famous well-known man, Mark Twain. If society is evil and reflects bad influences, the child experiencing this will be affected. Being exposed to harsh violence and witnessing society take away freedom from individuals greatly affects one's character development. Most would think that facing extreme financial issues and debt as a teenager and watching a slave be killed at the age of 10 would negatively affect oneself. However, because of his hometown, Mark Twain's character was shaped at a young age. Instead of neglecting his childhood, Twain was inspired to find his voice and share with the world his experience. Although Samuel Clemens, known to most as Mark Twain, didn't intend to become an author, his authentic voice, distinct style of humor, and public lectures led him to become the most celebrated writer and humorist in American history. Mark Twain arose from a young man who had been exposed to several life-changing experiences as an adolescent. Samuel Longhorn Clements was born in 1835 in Florida, Missouri. Soon after, he and his family moved to Hannibal, Missouri on the Mississippi River. Living in a slave state during this time period exposed Clements to several violent actions. Clements experienced cruelty, poverty, drunkenness, and several other tragedies at a young age. For example, at the age of 11, Clements' father, John Marshall Clements, died, which left the family with various financial issues. Although he was one of six children, Clemens was expected to help earn his family money. One of his many dreams was to learn the art of piloting a steamboat. Clemens didn't earn much money from this job, but he loved his career. Unfortunately, his job as a steamboat pilot was cut short in 1861 due to the Civil War. Clemens quotes, Once a day, a cheap, gouty boat arrived upward from St. Louis, and another downward from Keokuk. Before these events, the day was glorious with expectancy. After them, the day was a dead and empty thing. For a short time during the Civil War, Twain, was, Twain worked as a soldier, but he soon abandoned the military life for that of a gold prospector in Nevada. While he found little gold there, he did discover his talent of storytelling. After the Civil War, Samuel Clements was flat broke and in need of a regular job. He went to work as a reporter for the Virginia City Territorial Enterprise. In 1865, Clemens wrote his first story, Jim Smiley and His Jumping Frog, which led him to adopt the pen name Mark Twain. Clemens used this name because of, his, because of his strong love for piloting a steamboat. It was a Mississippi River term which translated to the safe depth for a steamboat, which inspired him to use it as his pen name. After this, Twain wrote in a letter to his brother, Orion, that he had a call to humorous literature. When Twain was younger and determined to help his family financially, he told his mother and sister that he had no intention of becoming an author. In a letter, he states, But I had my mind made up to one thing. I wasn't going to touch a book unless there was money in it, and a good deal of it. Clearly, Twain wasn't too determined to continue this career, but he still saw it as his strongest suit. His first book published brought his national fame instantly and showed his colloquial style and the complexity of his fine comic effects. Additionally, Mark Twain improved his social status in 1870 when he married Olivia Langdon, daughter of a rich New York coal merchant. Twain couldn't believe his good luck when he found her and hoped that she would reform him from his rustic ways. Meanwhile, Twain was captivating audiences in assembling lectures and after-dinner speeches. Mark Twain continued to write more novels and soon became one of the most popular writers in America. Twain used his Missouri draw, humor, and relaxed manner as he traveled and developed his famous lecture platform, which produced the crowds and money. At 34, Twain was one of the best-known storytellers in the West due to his distinctive style, friendly, funny, irreverent, and often satirical. Throughout his novels, Mark Twain wrote about the realities of his time period. He also addressed the ideas in a manner that most Americans could relate to. Specifically, in Huckleberry Finn, the novel that has raised much tension, Twain revealed the illusions that exist in American life. Because of his use of racial slurs and Huck's low grade of morality, the book has been banned from libraries in even many school districts. It is often very difficult to teach and discuss the novel in class due to the deeply offensive words such as the N-word. Despite this, Twain forged a new relationship between expression and content in this novel. With this book relating to his other most famous novel, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, 
He became the leader for all American, for all modern American literature. For the first time in America, the vivid and raw voice of the common folk was used to create great literature. Through Huck, the novel's narrator, Twain was able to address the shameful legacy of slavery prior to the Civil War and the persistent violence and racial discrimination after. That he did so in the voice of a 14-year-old boy, a character who shows signs of having been trained to accept the cruel attitudes of slaveholding culture. He uses his Western voice to critique society's ideas involving slavery. For example, Twain states, Just because you're taught that something's right and everyone believes it's right, it don't make it right. He also claims, Human beings can be awful and cruel to one another. These lines show the authority he gives himself and his ability to state his opinions directly. The authentic voice in which Twain uses has touched a nerve in the American hearts that is still troubling. In general, Twain reflected on his past accurately and wanted to give readers the same experience and feelings he had felt. In Life on the Mississippi, Twain recreates the details from his memory and persuades readers to have similar feelings for the river as him. Through his humor, he connected with people of his region by twisting accents and stating ideas that people genuinely understood. Twain himself called Tom Sawyer a, t- a hymn to boyhood. He experienced the legitimacy and naturalness of how it felt to grow up in a Missouri River town. The triumphs of boy literature, Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer, inspiring readers countless vivid memories of their own childhood. Mark Twain was known to keep alive his own boyhood, which appealed to crowds of young and old. He attained attention from all ages, and because of his pure voice, he is still recognized as a powerful author today. During Mark Twain's time, he was known for his humor that promoted tragic laughter, and this is still a main reason for his fame. Twain once preferred to be known as a serious writer. He was reluctant to adopt the humorous career and felt it was thrust upon him. Eventually, he accepted his role due to the fame it brought him. Twain's wit and satire overpowered in his novels and greatly pleased the audience. After the success of The Innocents Abroad, his publisher especially suggested and emphasized a humorous work. One way Twain achieved attention from crowds was by using the annoyance he gained from the ideas of everyday life. During his time, the American people were exasperated by the same annoyances as Twain himself, and his humor gave them relief. An additional reason his humor was universally popular was because it helped maintain the equilibrium of the businessman. Twain was often known as the business writer because he enabled the businessman to laugh at art. He releases this spleen which the business life involves. Twain enabled the readers to become a boy again and escape the emotional stress of maturity. For example, in his famous novel, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, which has become the comic novel of American childhood, Mark Twain developed unforgettable and humorous characters. These characters were relatable to readers such as businessmen and led to laughter. The main character, Tom Sawyer, was a clever creation. His train of thought, childish logic, imagination, and wit caused the reader to laugh aloud. In general, Mark Twain tended to toss characters into particular situations that led to his unique style of humor. In The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Tom finds the opportunity to attend his own funeral. With the character he is, he provides quite the entertainment for the reader and continues to do this in the other hectic events throughout his life. Since the book's comedy is narrated by someone who vividly recalls what it was like to be a child, it amuses adults with similar memories. Mark Twain is a master of dialogue. Not only are his characters, such as Tom Sawyer, funny in and of themselves, but also the way in which they interact with others. Their intelligent insults, pointless arguments, and fights with each other cause laughs. Lastly, the famous Mark Twain often uses tragic events and made them amusing. Although this sounds offensive, it was a technique especially used by him, and he used it effectively. Throughout his stories, humanity was commonly stripped of its rights and ridiculed because of them. According to James M. Cox, a supporter of Mark Twain's novels, this is the fate of humor. Cox wrote a novel about the power of Twain's humor, including his ability to convert all the serious issues and emotions of his life into narratives that evoke helpless laughter. Cox claims that Twain backed up the idea that what begins as tragic becomes his, with enough time humorous, and what at a distance appears funny is up close tragic. James Cox focused on Twain's overall style of humor by beginning his novel with one of his humorous quotes. I can't stand George Eliot and Hawthorne and those people. I see what they are at a hundred years before they get to it. 
and they just tire me to death. And as for Henry James Bostonians, I'd rather be damned to John Bunyan's heaven than read that. Cox describes this quote as a specific example of his relaxed compression. Twain had the ability to full forcefully express his opinions and did this through his humor. Cox fell in love with Twain's writing style and he even includes a piece of his detailed exploration of Huck Finn that backs up his belief that Twain would never want his books to be excluded from library shelves. Mark Twain captivated numerous people, but James M. Cox is one significant supporter of Twain's works. Mark Twain not only displayed his extraordinary humor in his novels, but also through public lecturing and as an after-dinner speaker. Much of his knowledge was based on what he learned from oral delivery. Twain drew in the crowd through his excellent technique of public speaking. At first, he presented his jokes in a ferocious manner, allowing him to vent his hatred of pioneer life in all its conditions. Over time, his act of transforming his aggressions into jokes rendered them less offensive and harmful. Moreover, Twain presented his amusement with a poker face, which added to his material's hilarity. This can also be known as deadpan delivery, which is his act of pretending to be unaware of the humor in his story. Twain told his stories gravely and did his best to conceal the fact that he suspects there is anything funny about it. Charles Farrar Brown, better known as Artemis Ward, was one of the masters of this style. Twain witnessed and appreciated Brown's style and used it quite often throughout his public speaking career. Additionally, Mark Twain would always comment on how difficult it was to respond to his complimentary introductions and toasts he received for his speeches. For example, before one of his lectures called General Miles and the Dog, Twain was introduced as a person of merit with a high tribute to his place in American literature. Following this introduction, Twain began his lecture saying, It is hard work to make a speech when you have listened to compliments from the powers and authority. A compliment is a hard text to preach to. When the chairman introduces me as a person of merit and when he says pleasant things about me, I always feel like answering simply that what he says is true. That is all right. This is just one specific example of Mark Twain's humor that he casually throws into his lectures. Because he believed accepting compliments was difficult, Twain acknowledges the compliments and fame he received in a humorous manner, which was his best trait. Following this statement, Twain provided a comical example of when he introduced a speaker. I remember out in Sydney once having to respond to some complimentary toast. My one desire was to turn in my tracks like any other worm and run for it. I was remembering that occasion at a later date when I had to introduce a speaker, hoping then to spur his speech by putting him in a joke on the defensive. I accused him in my introduction of everything I thought it was impossible for him to have committed. When I finished, there was an awful calm. I had been telling his life history by mistake. Unfortunately, Twain's use of humor in this situation backfired, but due to his entertaining reputation, he was still accepted. Clearly, Mark Twain had several techniques that were vital to his humor, which is still read today. Twain's last 15 years were filled with public honors, including degrees from Oxford and Yale. He was one of the most prominent celebrities around the world, traveling widely overseas, including a successful round-the-world lecture in 1895 to 1896, undertaking to pay off his debt. While those years were gilded with awards, they also brought much anguish. Twain lost his toddler son, Langdon, his favorite daughter, Susie, and the youngest daughter, Jean, in 1909. His later life was shattered by disappointment and tragedy, and as he grew older, he turned into a bitter man. Despite this harsh end of his life, Twain is the most celebrated humorist in American history. Since humor by nature is very difficult to translate from language to language, it is even more surprising to find that Twain's appeal has traveled throughout the world. His work continues to win new audiences everywhere. In America particularly, he is a touchstone of our cultural identity. Born to a large family of indifferent fortune in a rundown shack, poorly educated but intelligent and ambitious, he became rich, famous, and respected for his brilliant wit, kindly humor, and staggering insight. Mark Twain is specifically remembered today in the Mark Twain Prize for American Humor. This is an American award that has been presented by the John F. Kennedy Center for the performing annual for the performing arts annually since 1998. The award is considered the highest accolade in comedy and recognizes individuals who have had an impact on American society in the vein of 19th century novelist and essayist Mark Twain. 
It is offered to honor a person who is one of the world's greatest humorists. Previous recipients of this award are Steve Martin, Tina Fey, Will Ferrell, Ellen DeGeneres, and many more. Mark Twain is an American icon, and he will live and breathe in us as long as we can read his books, remember his jokes, and imagine ourselves as children.